Welcome back to Drinks with Matt Danoon. We are doing another left producer. Uh, we are doing another wine by the producer left. This is the Pinot Noir Reserve 2013. <clears throat> now, this is a Pinot Noir from Austria. Left, as I said before, wonderful producer. Uh, small hectare acreage, about 23 hectares. Um, really wonderful. 20 years of being the biggest promoter of Austrian wines out of the Wagram region has a living uh, varietal museum of cultivated indigenous grapes that they're preserving to showcase Austria's provenance. What we have here is Pinot Noir. Now Pinot Noir is close to my heart and as we all know Pinot Noir from everywhere is different. So Pinot Noir as a word is like saying pants. It's tons of things, it means tons of different fashion styles and statements. This is a cold climate Austrian Wagram Pinot Noir. It is fermented in stainless steel, spends about 18 months in 75% new French oak casks. So this Pinot Noir, right off the bat, is a nice intense ruby color. It is not opaque, I can see through it, but um, it does refract a lot of light and it does have a depth or deepness to the color. Um, it showcases a lot of cold climate aspects in its appearance. Let's take a little smell. Now the number one giveaway of Pinot Noir is red cherry. You can blind taste Pinot Noir from a mile away. Now what type of red cherry? This Pinot Noir sees a lot of oak for a significant amount of time, especially for a cold climate Pinot Noir. So while I do have red cherry right off the bat, I get a lot of other red berries, red currant. I get a slight amount of cranberry really balancing the opulence because the red cherry is a bit candied. I wouldn't say it's um, Lifesavers red cherry or Jolly Rancher red cherry, but it's definitely caramelized or slightly vanillaized red cherry because of the barrel. The barrel's giving off a lot of baking spices, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, clove, butterscotch, vanilla, caramel, but with balance. And that's really the beauty of Leth. He is adding all of these brighter flavors to a cold climate Pinot Noir that could be cherry pit or cherry skin. And he's bringing it to an elevated culture. I really enjoy it. I could smell this all day, but I'm not going to. Let's try it. Now here's something I love about this wine and that everybody will love about this wine is that I don't really appreciate Oregon for the amount of uh, body and tannic content and oomph that their barrels provide. 18 months and 75% new French oak, and this is still medium bodied and almost slightly thin on the palate, as Pinot Noir should kind of be. It is not bucked up in tannic content. It is not uh, you know, a bravado style of Pinot Noir. It adds brightness to these cold climate flavors. It adds some amount of thickness on the palate, though still not much noticeable thickness, and the tannins don't really grab the gums, but they do sit on the shag rung of your tongue. This is an enjoyable Pinot Noir. It is not too buffed up. You do not have to have food with it to dry out your palate or clean off your tongue. This is a conversational style of Pinot Noir, soft and fruity in style for sure. It's a wonderful wine. It uh, retails for about, on average, $35. So again, if you're looking for a nice Pinot Noir or you love Pinot Noir or someone said go pick up a Pinot Noir and you need to go do it, you should be looking for an Austrian Pinot Noir left. Please, give it a try. Cheers. Thanks for coming to the Drinks with Matt Danoon.